Welcome to The Thriving Christian Artist, the podcast where we hope you connect with God to bust through the roadblocks that have held you back for years, create the work you love, and really live the life you know God created you to live as an artist in His kingdom. I'm Matt Tama, your host. Let's get started. Well, hey there. I'm so glad that you're with me on the podcast today. I've got my friend Kate Green uh, from the UK who is here with me today. Kate, I'm so excited that you are here on the Thriving Christian Artist podcast today. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. We've gotten to know each other over the last year, 18 months or so on on Facebook as a part of my Creative Thrive mentoring program and just uh-huh. uh, sharing with what you know God's doing all over the world. But uh, it's, it's funny, social media connects so many people. And then I found out, oh my gosh, we should have been friends anyway, because we know so many <laughs> of the same people. Yeah, 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 we do. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all my friends in Scotland and all the folks who've come to Gathering of Artisans over there or, or things like that, it's, uh, yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's amazing it's a how- It's small world. That's right, that's right. So, so Kate, you're a mixed media artist, uh, abstract artist. You do just such beautiful work, love to teach and all that sort of thing. You know, one of the things that I- I'd love to to do with people on the podcast is kind of roll back uh, time a little bit and and look Mm -hmm. at how things started. Because a lot of times when people see somebody like you, who's really thriving in what God's called them to do and that sort of thing, all they see is the picture of you now. And they don't know, you know, how long it's taken or the journey there, that sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. roll back the tape a little bit and, and tell us how you started, you know, as an artist and really walking into the things that, that you're walking into now? Yeah, well, um, art was always my favourite subject at school. Um, I wasn't massively academic, and it's uh, the thing that I could do. Um, So, yeah, I left school and did um, an art foundation course, which was like a year um, of nothing but art, uh, trying a bit of everything, which was just like my dream. Um, But I'd, I'd never met any artists I, I I don't know it didn't really occur to me that being an artist was a real thing <laughs> um and so I I went into um teaching um I trained as an art teacher so that's what brought me to Cambridge um I met my husband um we got really involved with our church and settled here um he became the church leader I um was the youth and the kids worker uh we had three daughters and um all of a sudden, like 20 years had gone by. Um, <laughs> yeah, Welcome to I, your I, 40s, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I'd not had the chance to sort of do what I knew was in me, you know, the creative stuff that I knew I was made to do. And actually, I, I felt God had kept saying wait, but it was sort of on the shelf waiting for that permission. Um, and it was, it was when I turned 40, which is like five years ago, that that God sort of said, right, it's time. Um, uh, There was one specific day where um, he clearly gave me this uh, picture of a butterfly sort of struggling out of its cocoon and Mm. reminded me that, like, it's in its the second half of its life um, and that it was my time to sort of spread my wings and show my colors and to fly. Um, So that that was sort of, yeah, my sort of permission, go for it. I think that's so wonderful just to break in a second. I think it's so wonderful for, for so many artists. Um, I know I was telling somebody the other day when I started doing the gathering of artisans conferences and, you know, speaking and wrote unlocking the heart of the artist and all that, it was like vision that I had was like all these, you know, 20 something hipsters, you know, Mm. coming and, you know, having the cool conference I thought in my head, you know, and all this sort of thing. And it's been yeah. so beautiful to see people that are in the same stage of life that I'm in and that you're in, which is yeah. this kind of having lived a little bit, have a family, walk through life, and yet coming back to the realization that, hey, there was something inside of me way back then. And I need to go redig that thing with the Holy Spirit so that I can yeah. really step into the the fullness of who he created me to be. And one of the things I think interesting about your story, and I would just say the same is that you, you know, not having a context for really even knowing what a full-time artist Mm. or working artist looked like. Doesn't seem like you really had that. And I know that I didn't have it. And so it's kind of one of those things like, well, God, if you're calling me to be an artist and what does that even look like? And, and I think it's one of the reasons I'm so passionate now about being an artist because it's like we need to be the forerunners for others 
you know, yeah, to step yeah. into their calling, you know? So talk a little bit just about that for you. Well, I mean, at, at the time, it, it was like God suddenly pressed the go button for me. Mm. Uh, things just started dropping into my lap, you know, whether it was ideas or opportunities. So um, literally from that moment, um, within a few months, I, I created a, a crochet business was the thing I got started with. Uh, out of nowhere, I'd, n- I'd never actually <laughs> I'd never actually learned to crochet or, or been interested in it, but um, just through turn of events, I, I learned to um, make a crochet flower, enjoyed it, find it satisfying, and, and within months, I, I was um, selling and I was being featured in magazines, and it was just something that God shaped, um, and, and through that, I had a two-year-old at home at the time, so it, it worked, you know, going to toddler groups in my handbag, and um, it got, you know, got me sort of connections within the sort of craft art world in Cambridge. And it just grew, grew my confidence. Um, mm. and, and then from that, um, I, I knew that fine art was where I was heading. Um, so I was drawing in my um, Times with God um, at church. I sort of asked if they'd mind if I put like um, sheets of paper up on the cupboard doors um, during the worship time. And, and sort of, it was off to one side, so I sort of told myself, nobody's watching. Um, <laughs> and, and just learned to do that in a, in a worship setting. Um, and then I got invited to um, to paint at prayer meetings and I got um, invited to be part of the worship team at church and paint at the front. Um, and, and, and it just snowballed, I, I, you know, different um, painting opportunities at different places and exhibiting and selling and my business has grown and um yeah it's just taken off god god's had me on this <laughs> exciting journey <laughs> now w- when you first started getting asked to paint in worship and that sort of thing was that something that was totally foreign to you or was it something that you were connecting with the lord already you know in your creative process and it was natural because i know that freaks a lot of people out and for some people it's like oh yeah that's primarily what i do so how does that work for you it's it's literally something I found myself doing mm. um it's like God had this plan and um I had to sort of catch up a little bit um wow. yeah so I, I don't know I, I found that um yeah God's ideas seem to be quite his dreams for me seem to be quite big and 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 sort of I've been trying to play catch up a bit um so I yeah I sort of found that um I was I was in a public setting pretty fast um, Mm. and and I'd had no real um, art training. So I I was literally in front of hundreds of people with, without feeling I'd learned how to paint. Um, I I was out of my debt. So I I got some uh, coaching from, um, do you know Patty Ann Hale? Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah. So we we had like Skyping um, sessions for a year. And and so she helped me to develop my, my voice as an artist and my confidence, which made a big difference. Um, but actually, I, I don't know, God, God was opening doors and I was saying yes and I was being brave and I was being bold, but actually it, it started to take its toll. Um, and this time last year, um, I was in quite a mess with it, if I'm honest. I, sort of, I felt like a real fraud um, because I, I was painting in public, but, but uh, more than I was in private. Mm. Um, and, and I was getting more scared and more tight with it and and I felt exhausted and, and I wasn't making any money. And, and it was at that point I came across uh, your mentoring program. <laughs> wow. um, yeah. And, and so I, need, I needed to realign with God again. Um, Talk a little of- bit about that process, because I think so many people, it's so, it's so easy for all of us to kind of, you know, find something that we're really connecting with the Lord with. And then we sort of get on autopilot you know and we yeah, just yeah. kind of start going and then we find ourselves in the middle of nowhere going I don't think this is quite where I was supposed to be <laughs> so. yeah well I, I think I was I was full of resentment really that, that God hadn't let me get on with this stuff earlier mm. um and then once he did he was like he was pulling me along too fast um wow. so I, I just needed to sit down um and and sort of for us to join our dreams together again um and to agree with him and and start trusting him and listening to him and uh you know so the whole sort of setting a vision and and clarifying what is it you're wanting this to be and um and finding that the things that I've been excited about were the things he was excited about but it was it was a joining together again it's like um 
I felt that life and art were like this massive mountain in front of me. Um, you know, everything was like an uphill struggle. Um, and it, it felt like if I could just do this or if I could just complete that, then I'd feel more in control or I'd um, be able to go at a more sensible pace. And, and God's really clearly said, just let, let's flatten this mountain um, mm. and, and start seeing life as a level playing field. You know, enjoy the journey and pace yourself. This is a rest of your life thing. Let's do it together, you know, and, and that's what I'm learning to live out. That is so good because I think so many of us, especially if you have a, a vision that you're passionate about and you're a, kind of a go-getter type of person, which I would, you know, just knowing you online and that sort of thing, yeah, I can yeah. see that you're, <laughs> you know, a, a visionary focused kind of person. It's so easy yeah. to, to see vision as something to accomplish as opposed to something to experience. And yeah. I'm in the same thing now in my life. I mean, it's, there's always these these seasons, these big things that God calls you to, but it's like, Hey, it's in the every day, right? It's the step-by-step step, yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. with him. I just read this phenomenal book by a friend of mine, Alan Arnold called the story of with, and it's like, uh -huh. listen, the whole point of this life of life in the kingdom is not to do things for God, but to do things with him, to hmm. experience the journey with him. And, you know, one of the beautiful things I noticed on your website, uh, which for anybody that's listening is flourishandfly.co.uk. And I was, I love this, this little line. It says, I describe myself as a song painter using mm. paint to sing with color, visceral, visual utterances of shape, hue and mark, uh, or my vocabulary, a whole heart, mind, body, and soul thing. Talk about that a little bit. Cause I know that when a lot of people you know, all of our creative processes are different. All the, the mm. way that we engage the Holy Spirit in the creative process is different. But for you, it seems like a very visceral, uh, moving with, you know, if you will, as, as you're painting, as you're creating. So talk about how that's developed and how you really flow in your creative process. Yeah, I guess um, God's been teaching me um, to hear his voice and, and to share what he wants to say through colors. Um, I found it's like I've discovered a new language um, mm. that, that it's, it can speak to like people of any age and any faith. Um, so for instance, like I'll, I'll notice a color will like leap out at me and God will sort of nudge me and say, well, you know, what, what would you call that Kate? And well, you know, what type of blue is it or pink or whatever? And then, and they say, what, what does that remind you of? And then he sort of unpacks it for me mm. um, in a way that helps to like, communicate something of his kingdom to people. So if I'm um, planning a painting it, like uh, in a public setting, um, I'll have this dialogue with him. He'll give me an idea um, for a piece. Um, and that comes with colors and composition. I don't necessarily know what it's going to look like, but... Um, yeah, I, I have this, these basic sort of parameters and I've got a title and um, I know how it links to a Bible passage. And, and then in the, in the space when I'm painting, I, I try to like um, respond to the Holy Spirit and what he's doing. Um, so, for instance, like I'll pour paint down the canvas when I feel that, that God is pouring himself out in a specific way or mm. I'll like um, create tears and, and wipe them if I feel a sense of God bringing comfort um, and sometimes like God nudges me to invite people to come and make a mark on the actual piece um, by way of responding to the message so for instance there's one that I did was just called um, Lifted which was based on like Isaiah 40 um, and I felt it was for people who were really tired and worn out and or people who felt stuck and grounded, um, you know, and needed to find those eagles wings. And, and I felt I needed to invite them to come and paint silver um, with a feather onto the painting by mm. way of like connecting with heaven. Um, so I've had like cues of people lining up in front of my pieces of work um, at an event, you know, ready to interact with God. But I, I'll do it at home as well in my studio. It's much more of a playful um, setting. I'll sort of, I don't plan it quite so much, but it's still expressing something of God through colors. And then I love to take what I've done in an encounter with God and take it into a secular space. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I show it to people who don't know him and, um, and they're fascinated by by the freedom they talk about, you know, an energy and a joy that they see and they, they're drawn to it. They, they want to know more. Um, 
So like I, I've, in, in the middle of Cambridge, I've rolled out a canvas on the floor, on, on the pavement outside the shops, um, and I've put music on, worship music, but instrumental. And, and I've got a theme, uh, a worship theme, um, like I did like um, Decked in Delight. Um, and I celebrated God with colours, with people watching. Um, and yeah, I'm a prophetic artist, I'm a, I'm a worship artist, but a song painter, you know, it's just, it's more of an accessible, um, you know, word that people can relate to. Um, and I choose titles that, that, again, will engage people, but aren't sort of um, Christian jargon. <laughs> um, I sort of feel, you know, Matthew 10, it talks about being as cunning as snakes and Absolutely. as gentle as doves. Um, and and that, that's what I feel called to do. And I usually do these public things to invite people along to something like an exhibition I'm doing. And, and, and it's in that place where someone's next to me asking, you know, what, what are these colours about? Or, you know, I love this, you know, tell me more. Um, then, you know, I, I can sort of gauge with them as to, you know, what, where to take that um, mm. as a conversation. And, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's telling my story with integrity and being genuine rather than just preaching at somebody, you know, who I've not even met. Right. Um, so, yeah. There's so many that, ways my... I could take off with this conversation because it's like, oh, this is so <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> Well, hey, there's Matt. And, you know, one of the things that I found over the years in working with artists is that real lasting change in our life happens best in the context of supportive Christian community. And that's why I wanted to take this opportunity just to take a second and invite you to be a part of my online community called the Thriving Christian Artists Facebook group. Listen, this group is absolutely free and over the years has actually grown to thousands and thousands of artists in just about every creative medium from countries all over the world. You know, the cool thing is that it's become a real place of encouragement and life for artists, just like you and me, who want to share their work, share their life, <laughs> connect with other artists, and really pursue everything God has for us as artists in his kingdom. Now, listen, to join, all you have to do is just click the link in the show notes here and answer a couple of questions just to let us know that you're a real person, and bam, you're in, okay? So, listen, I can't wait to connect with you inside of my Thriving Christian Artist Facebook group. Do it now, and we'll see you there very soon. All right, bye. The the one thing I'm struck by in both in, in just in hearing your story in the both in the church and in the marketplace mm. is your willingness to release your work and your creative process. Um, I would say to the Lord and allow other people to enter in to that process. Was that something that was normal for you? Was that a challenge? Um, because that's something I, you know, so many people hold their work so closely and so privately that they never let anybody else in until it's completely finished. You know, so many people are struggling with perfectionism and it's like, you're on the other yeah. side of that. It feels like, where, <laughs> no, this is like an experience we're all in and I'm trusting God in the yeah. middle of it to, to make it this beautiful thing. So talk a little bit about how that flows with you. Yeah, well, I, th I think, like I said, it's something I've almost found myself doing. Mm. I mean, this, this, this big work um, was originally something Patty gave me as a homework, um, which was I was getting very tight and worried and planning everything to the nth degree. Because I'm, I'm a strange combination of I, I love a bit of order and chaos. Um, and um, I like planning. I like to know where I'm going. And, um, and I was getting too tight because it was all in public. And I was, you know, um, so she just said, get a giant piece of paper and worship. And, and, and it was just like finding myself. Mm. Um, and so I, I then started doing that um, and recording it um, and put it on Facebook. And the reaction was like, you know, sort of, wow, this is impacting people. So then it, I don't know, it just developed to sort of, oh, maybe I could do this, I don't know, on the city streets or, um, I, I, you know, I've ended up doing, but um, at Easter, I did a, a Christian conference uh, in front of like 3,000 people, you know, massive six foot paintings and with it projected on the screen. And, and I sort of, again, I almost found myself doing it. And as I started the first night, absolutely terrified. I just felt God saying, this is what you're made to do. Mm. Have fun. Mm. Uh, and I did from that moment. I just couldn't believe, you know, that how much fun it was. I was, because it's so massive. I could just splat paint and, <laughs> and really engage. I mean, there's photos of me with my hands, you know, with it dripping and, and people, yeah, seem to really appreciate, you know, when, it, when there's, 
when I'm on the street, you know, the parents are holding their kids back. <laughs> um, you know, it's just there's such. And what I do is isn't clever. You know, it, it's a sort of um, processes that anybody can learn. I've, I've done a week's residency in a local school and, and taught them all my techniques and, you know, got, got them to, to have a go. And, and what they've produced was, you know, just as expressive and beautiful as what I do. Because, um, yeah, it's I, I'm, what I produce seems to be pleasing mm. and beautiful and full of colour and people seem to love it and want to buy it. Um, but it's beyond that it's it's about the heart really yeah. um, and of course my heart is is celebrating grace and um and that draws people whether they know it or understand it or not Absolutely. um now talk yeah. a little bit about that transition because i know for so many people you know they love their artwork as ministry they love seeing god use that in the context of corporate worship even in the marketplace like you're saying but you've been able to beautifully move you know I don't want to say from that, but in addition to all of yeah. that end of what you do, you're also actively selling your work in the marketplace. You're teaching. Um, I know, you know, obviously that's something I'm very passionate about in the mentoring program and in all of that, we talk about how to be authentic and share your story. And, uh, but also that God brings provision in your life through your calling and through your assignment. So how is that uh, working for you? You know, how is that, how was that transition and what are some of the cool things you're seeing God do in that side of things? Yeah, I, I feel um, from an early stage, I really felt, although I was, I was sort of told you probably need to choose one or the other. Mm. Um, I felt really clearly God wanted me to, to do both and to work out a way of doing that. Um, I feel that the, the uh, church side of things just happens it's it's it, I don't know for me it, it's just doors are just opening almost too too quickly um uh, the secular side of things I'm feeling I need to I feel quite sort of protective of that I've got I've got to make that happen I've got to you know work towards that because I know that's where God wants me to be as well um and so um recently I've um actually made the decision that I need to separate those two audiences a bit better I felt quite compromised um, in both settings because I've, I've um, as I've been approaching galleries and doing exhibitions and, and the more secular side of things, I felt I've wanted my, um, what I put out there in terms of my website and, and social media, I've, I've not wanted to sort of um, put people off really by being overly Christian. And, um, and so I've pulled back on what I, you know, would would like in some ways so um, i'm actually i've just started um my new website actually which is kategreenart.com um so i'm not flourish and fly anymore um, <laughs> and and i'm in the in the spring i'm i'm going to move that into kategreenartandsoul.com as well so i'm going to have these two audiences where one is is for the secular where you know, I'm not going to hide the fact I'm a Christian, but I'm not, I'm not going to be preaching at people. And, you know, I just let, let it sort of um, filter through as, as it needs to. But then the, uh, the Kate Green Art and Soul, um, I just feel that I, I'm hoping I can be more, uh, you know, I've got poetry that I'm writing and I've, I've all, all this stuff, you know, that I'm talking to you about that I don't necessarily open up to on social media. I just, mm. yeah. Does, does that make sense? I sort of, I feel Absolutely. I've got two audiences that, um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. I mean, I think, you know, I have matttommy.com, which is my artwork. And if you were to walk in to my studio, you know, people, <laughs> it's funny when I speak at churches or, you know, people read a book and contact me on social media, they're like, so do you make Christian baskets? And I'm like, well, I didn't yeah. even know that you could make Christian. <laughs> I mean, what is, what is that? You know? It's, yeah. And yeah. so it's like, no, I'm an artist who loves Jesus. And I hope that my life and my work, reflects that um but there it's not for me it's not an overt vehicle that when you yeah. come in you know you're going to see a painting of jesus or see scripture or things like that it's a reflection of the beauty of god through my life and mm. that's a, a beautiful thing that anybody can uh interact with in the marketplace and then you know like i've got matt tommy mentoring.com which is kind of the whole artist side yeah. podcast books encouraging and overt ministry and you know I think as you grow, I mean, anybody that knows me 
pretty much now. I mean, as an artist, they know the other stuff that I do as well. And it's, uh, there's this authenticity that can, that can come, but I don't feel, and I hear that with you. It's not like I, I feel pressed on one side or the other to be like, Oh, I don't want them to know that I'm a Christian or, you know, Mm. Oh, I don't want them to know that I'm a a quote unquote secular artist. I just believe that it's all in the kingdom. And Mm. part of the beautiful um, dynamic that we all have as artists is to, is the mystery I think of, of creating and being able to put things into the marketplace and not know how people are going to respond to it and yeah. be able to just kind of walk through that with people. I think that's much more interesting and beautiful and exciting uh, as opposed to saying all the time, you know, I'm a Christian artist. This is Christian art. Mm. You should interpret it this way or that way. So it's just, that's just too, for me, that's too small a thing. Yes. You know, I sort of, I feel that, um, you know, that, that there's a God's, you know everywhere and huge and stunning and and so of course he's relevant to every area mm. of life i just i think i'm 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 thrilled that the paintings that i create um that are in response to my relationship with him are something that people who don't know him and might maybe even don't like him um you know st- still love and and respond in a positive way to and i'm finding as i approach galleries and and i have my exhibitions um people are sort of like resonating with something that they can see you know i've got that they're interested in um you know i've I've had people say i I love the colors and i would love to have you in our gallery and you know we'd love to um buy your work i want this in my lounge or you know and and that's really exciting to me because i didn't and, and the, so I'm talking about these two different audiences, but the, the work is the same, yes. you know? Um, and so, and it works in, in both settings and I want to be blessing both settings. I want to be stirring up people within the church to, to engage with God in new ways and, mm. and to be sharing their faith, you know, in, in, in visual ways. And, but, you know, I, I don't, I've never found sharing my faith particularly easy. Um, and suddenly someone says, you know, these colors and shapes, what do they mean? Um, I've got something to talk about, you know, yeah. um, it, it's easy and straightforward and it, it's just me, it's my story. And, and then of course it impacts, you know, more because it's, you've got relationship and um, yeah, it comes from somewhere rather than being this cold sort of prepared thing. Absolutely. I think, you know, sharing your faith, quote unquote, you know, is much easier when it comes out authentically out of a life that is pursuing God. And I think, you know, so many, so many of us were trained by religion and just by your know, religiosity to look for three points, five steps, yeah, you know, do yeah. it exactly like this. And it's like, as much as all that is wonderful, there's a dance to this. And there's this, this movement of leaning in and leaning out and being scared and doing it anyway. <laughs> and yeah. God show up and that's the beauty of the kingdom. And yes, we can learn from people who have walked before. And, you know, like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. But at the same time, we're all on this beautiful journey. Um, You know, I know that there are so many that are listening right now, Kate, and they're like, oh, I just, I wish I could do that. I wish I could paint at my church or at a conference one day, or I wish I could sell my work. You've been in that place. I, I wish you would just take a moment and, and pray for those people just to release them into the things that that god has for them would you would you be okay with that yeah yeah i'd love to go for it yeah yeah lord i I thank you for um for your love of of color and creativity and we we look at you and, and we want to respond by by creating beauty and and being like you and and i pray that you'd help people to uh to listen and hear your voice and, mm-hmm. and be obedient and, and trust you. Thank you that you, you have good plans for us and that you know what you're doing and, and help us to take risks, help us to be willing to, to put your calling into action. Yeah, um, yeah Lord, I, I, do, I do ask that you'd, whatever uh, people are called to do, I pray you'd help us to, by your spirit, have the courage to take the risks and put it into action. Mm. And um that your colors would um, would be seen from heaven as we reach up and bring things down from you. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. 
Kate, thank you so much for being on today. I know that people are going to are going to want to uh, connect with you on Facebook, Instagram, website, all that. So give us the latest, greatest places that we can connect <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm now Kate Green Art dot com, and um, yeah, Kate Green Art on all social media, YouTube, and do get in touch. I love, I love inspiring and encouraging people. Wonderful. Well, I hope everybody will do that and uh, like you, follow you, do all the things we do on social media, check out your work and just encourage you to keep being uh, all that God's called you to be. So again, thanks so much, Kate, for being on today. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me today on the podcast. Listen, I hope it's been a huge encouragement to you on your journey as an artist. Hey, also, before you leave, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the other episodes of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. And also, be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, or at my website, which is matttommymentoring.com. Until next time, remember, you were created to thrive. Bye-bye.